Hi, welcome to One Eye on the Page. This is Scott, uh, as you may see. That's, that just shows <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in my normal uh, setting. You may recognize this from a, a Hobbit's reading list. Uh, not going to be a, a long note today. I'm very tired. Been flying on a plane, and it's very late. Uh, I've read about an hour of Sense and Sensibility, and I have read Robert Thorogood's Death Comes to Marlowe. I have not finished it, but I'm about 75% of the way through it, so I should finish it in the morning since we will be on another plane. So, for now... I will hopefully uh, talk to you a little bit more tomorrow, but I'm going to bed. <laughs> so good night. Hey, it is uh, Saturday, June 3rd. It's been a long day of travel, so this is probably going to be another short one again. Uh, but this morning I finished the Robert Thorogood book. Death Comes to Marlowe. I have lots of thoughts about it, which I will hope to talk about more tomorrow. Once again, I figured out who the murderer was well before the book was finished. I will try to touch more tomorrow. I'm very tired, so I will talk to you then. Good morning, everybody. It is June 5th. I am in Massachusetts right now. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've read in the last couple days. I didn't do a video yesterday, and I don't know if I'm going to post the video that I did on Saturday because it was after a long day of travel. It was only about a minute long, and I think I was a little bit incoherent. So, uh, I flew out Friday to Chicago. Uh, stayed there overnight and then flew from Chicago to Boston. So I got a lot of reading done. I started and finished Death Comes to Marlowe by Robert Thorogood, uh, which is the second in the Marlowe Mystery Club series. It is, as I said in my perhaps unreleased video, is not as good as the Marlowe Murder Club. But... It was still a decent book. One of the things I really liked about the Marlowe Murder Club is that the characters, the main characters, the detectives, kind of had interesting lives and backstories in depth that you don't usually see with main characters in mystery books. That wasn't necessarily the case with this book. Uh, Judith, Judith Potts, the main character... Uh, her backstory was lightly touched upon. There was no further you know, revelations about her. So Bex, the vicar's wife, had a secret that she was keeping from other people, but it was a misdirect and it wasn't the secret that you are led heavily to think it is. And I don't know necessarily that it was particularly interesting uh susie uh the dog walker uh is now doing a a radio show in the local community and she wants to be famous that that's the extent of her her depth 
the mystery i said last time with uh, the marlow murder club i i solved the mystery about three quarters of the way through i figured out the murder in here a little bit more than halfway through i i won't spoil it because i still think it's a good book although it's nowhere near as good as the marlow murder club but i was very disappointed that i had uh solved it so early so i think i will probably give death comes tomorrow three and a half stars which is still decent but i gave the marlow murder club four and a half stars so it's a bit of a drop in quality i think also and i don't know if this is just a kindle thing uh the start of every chapter in the first line the proper nouns are not capitalized and that's just a nitpicky thing with me so it just it happens every chapter so it really started to bother me i also read at while well, waiting at the airport and on the plane ride book lovers by emily henry this book is part of the romance video that i got planned so I'm not going to go too in-depth into it. Romance isn't usually a category that I generally read. So uh, I thought this was pretty good, especially for a romance series. Um, it's got a lot of the tropes that you would expect to... I wouldn't say enemies, but to antagonists, perhaps. Uh find common ground, grow closer together, book lovers, you can kind of see where the common ground starts. Uh, there's a lot of uh, family history for the main character that is delved into deeply. There's depth in, by depth I, depth, I mainly mean flaws, which I appreciate to side characters. There aren't perfect characters in here and i appreciate that sometimes in romances spoiler for a book i'm about to talk about there's a character who is like perfect perhaps not in all areas of life but like physically perfect or you know emotionally perfect even the side characters like uh the main characters and I, I have forgotten the main character's name. Let's see. Oh, the main character, Nora, her sister it comes across, as Nora describes her, as the perfect sister. But you, you see, as the book goes on, she, she's not perfect. She makes mistakes. She is unnecessarily secretive, I will say. I want to get it four and a half stars, but four and a half stars is what I gave Kiss Her Once for me, which I think is a superior book to this. So I'm going to have to find the graphic for this, but I'm going to give this 4.25 stars. I also have BJ Novak's uh, One More Thing. I've read one story in here so far. Uh, I expressed hesitancy about this book. The first story hasn't necessarily dispelled that hesitancy, but it was not a bad story. It was a sort of a sequel to The Tortoise and the Hare. It was fine, but it does come across as somebody who went to a perhaps an Ivy school writing it so i've also started ghost of christmas pass i've only gone part way through the first story so i won't really talk about that much uh, all right the hating game by sally thorne the problem i have with this book is this that it's not an awful book that I, I could completely dismiss but oh my god does it have some of the worst tropes when i talked about physical perfection 
the the male character in here uh he's like physically perfect and i i have read about like or i've read and i've seen videos about the uh the trope of the really small woman and the really uh tall man tall muscular like I physically couldn't really express what this person is supposed to look like, but like a transformer with skin or something. Uh, but this, this book here perfectly uh, is that trope, but not so perfectly, I guess, depending on how you look at it. It's written in the first person by Lucy in Josh. Joshua apparently has, clothes that he wears on certain days of the week and she describes them like all the time and I don't care so for it to constantly be repeated it, it's just it's, it's tedious I've had to put down this book several times um, and I actually pr purchased another book on Kindle to kind of go back and forth on and I will talk about that one in a little bit um, but I'm about I'm a hundred and fifty pages in I think it's like three hundred and seventy or eighty pages and so I'm like at least a third of the way through a little bit more it's it I have found in the romance novels that I have read that they they all follow tropes some do them very successfully like kiss her once for me some do not the hating game doesn't seem to apparently but it's also not so bad that i'm like i can't finish this it's just like i have to take breaks from this because it's it's a lot i i will leave that as it is for now now what i did do yesterday because i was just <sighs> the book became too much so i ended up purchasing uh people we meet on vacation by emily henry who also wrote book lovers uh i am something that i have that's very fortunate for me is that uh, i'm here with robin my daughter and my other kid and robin's husband and robin got the rental car so robin does the driving so I get to get a lot of reading done in the car. I, I've read, I believe, like already 60 pages or so of people we meet on vacation. Uh, it's it's another trope one. There's, uh, I can, I, I've forgotten the woman's name, but the guy's name is Alex. It's another first person, so she doesn't say her name as much. So I've kind of blanked on that. But uh, they are best friends. They have been best friends since college. Uh, a they go on vacation like every year. She does travel writing, first on a blog and now as part of a, a magazine. And a couple of years ago, they went on vacation and something happened, which I don't know what it is yet. And they aren't talking to each other and they he she sorry she decides to contact him out of the blue sort of but because somebody asked her when was the last time she was happy last time she was happy was when she was you know friends with him so she contacts him and asks if he wants to go on vacation with her and again they haven't talked like in two years they, they sent like birthday messages and that's the extent of the talking that they've done in that time and he agrees and she is also going to his brother's wedding so again tropes but emily henry seems to be better at writing the tropes well than sally thorne and and i just have i have two books by emily henry and one by sally thorne so I, I don't know, but I, I'm definitely enjoying the two books that I read or am reading by Emily Henry and Sally Thorne. Uh, 
we'll we'll see where it goes. It it could be it's not the pendulum just keeps going back and forth and it keeps going to the bad side a lot more than the good, but I, I wouldn't say it's a bad book, but it's a frustrating book. It's an extremely frustrating book. Um, I am also reading uh, the second volume of Complete Short Stories by Guy de Maupassant. Uh, I've read two stories in there so far, and I think there are ten stories in this uh, volume. So I will definitely finish that this month. Uh, I I'm trying to read like, a story every day. I yeah, I did. I did do it yesterday. Luckily, the these stories. Luckily, these stories are fairly short, so it's not a, a difficulty. Also, we went to a few uh, bookstores yesterday, and I actually picked up a few books. Uh, I picked up "On a Sunbeam" by Tilly Walden which is a graphic novel, as you can see. Uh, I will, a restoration crew travels to the deepest reaches of space, rebuilding beautiful broken structures to piece the past together. Two girls meet at boarding school and fall deeply in love, only to learn to paint a loss. With two interwoven timelines and stunning art, award-winning graphic novelist Tilly Walden uh, creates an inventive world breathtaking romance and an epic quest for love and you know that just kind of drew me in and just, just really smells good also so uh it, it is a, a graphic novel so that shouldn't be difficult to read i will probably end up reading it this month but i don't know that i will read any of it on vacation and i also put, picked up thinner by Richard Bachman. Now, if you watch my Stephen King videos, you know that I have already read this book. Um, that I already have it too. I I have it in paperback. Uh, this is hardback, which I enjoy more. You don't. There's no mention of Stephen King at all here. And as you can see by the lack of the price up here, it it is a a book club edition. But it is a hardback that I can put in my collection and i do kind of like the cover here so again i i won't be reading this at least not anytime soon but it, it's nice to have it in my collection i know we're going to another bookstore tomorrow but i don't know if i will buy any books because it's also in salem and so i don't want to be necessarily carrying a book all around Salem but we will see I know that Robin bought like four or five books so and my other kid brought bought four books too so you know I only got two books Chris doesn't buy books so he was walking around empty-handed so that is it for today um, this is definitely going to make up for the very short video that I made on Saturday which I probably will not even include in this. So I will talk to you tomorrow and probably uh, keep you up to speed on my uh, reading progress. Okay, well, the wind's probably going to sound pretty awful in here, but I'm in one of my favorite places, and the rain has finally stopped. Uh, going to be a short one today. I will get more into reviews later, but... I'm still working on the hating game. It's kind of a slog to get through. So, as I said, I downloaded uh, People Who Meet on Vacation and I finished that yesterday. It was a much better book. It's not as good as Emily Henry's uh, Book Lovers, but still much better than the hating game. We're going to Salem today, so that's about an hour's worth of... Uh, driving so I think I will probably finish the hating game today maybe not we will see uh, moving forward on short stories also that I've been reading and I 
picked up one of the books that I bought yesterday. We're also going to another bookstore today because we never go on vacation without going to at least four bookstores, it seems. So, uh, thanks to Robin. So, that is it for now. I will talk to you tomorrow. Maybe if I get up a little bit early, uh, I'll get a, a, a sunrise. Got to get up pretty early to do so. It, it's... It's 6 o'clock now, and I was up a little bit around 5, so we'll see. Till then. Uh, good morning. It is Wednesday, June 7th. Um, still on vacation. I've actually read a lot more than I was expecting to. Uh, it helps that I get up so early and I have to wait for everybody else to get up. So I've finished another book today. I finished The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. Uh, it was not good. I don't know for sure what I'm going to rank it yet. I may not rank these books entirely until I get back home. Uh, but it is everything that's bad about romance novels as far as I can tell. So much so that I purchased Emily Henry's People We Meet on Vacation because I had to keep pausing reading The Hating Game. So I've actually finished the Emily Henry book also. Which it, it it was it was very good, uh, maybe somewhat on the same par as book lovers. I don't know. I'm gonna think about it because my brain is in vacation mode. Also, uh, I also started and finished uh, the Summer of Broken Rules by K. L. Walther. Uh, it is a a young adult romance. Uh, 18 and 19 year old couple or eventually a couple spoiler alert uh it was pretty good it was uh actually almost like a, a cleanse after the hating game the hating game was that that bad um i've actually started a third emily henry book uh beach read which is amusing because so far there's, there's not a beach in sight in the book, but it's about two authors who decide to bet each other to write uh, the other one's genre. Uh, one is romance writer, one is a literary writer, and so it, it, it's interesting so far. Uh, I don't know how I am with romance books as a genre, but I, I like Emily Henry's books, so... Uh, but I'm maybe halfway through that book. I also purchased yesterday when we were in Salem at uh, Wicked Good Books, My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, it's a horror novel, which, except for Stephen King, I don't really read too many horror novels nowadays. Or if I do read horror novels, they are ones that I've read before, you know, like by Peter Straub or Robert McCammon. So this is a new one. Um, I picked it up one because I like the the title, My Heart is a Chainsaw, although it is also apparently book one of three, which it doesn't say anywhere on the front or back cover, but in the inside it does. So I will have to see how I like it. Uh, it's it's about a uh, essentially a serial killer a slasher killer so um, but it's supposed to be funny so we will see how that goes but I'm not going to get too much into the books as I said I will give reviews later but just wanted to get you up to date since I didn't do anything yesterday so I will talk to you tomorrow maybe.
it is Saturday, June 10th. I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog today. I have a lot more to say, but if I were to actually cover it all, this this video would be probably an hour, hour and a half long. So I have, since I started vacation uh, on two Fridays ago when I left, so in the past eight days, I have finished 12 books. So uh, in possibly at least one more, since uh, as you may see, I am at the airport. I'm at the hotel at the airport. Um, I'm going to be flying out tomorrow. So I will probably finish at least one more book tomorrow possibly another or at least get part way through it so on this vacation like 13 to 14 books have finished and i don't really feel like i spent a lot of time reading obviously i did it's just i grabbed it when i was you know when we were driving because I wasn't the actual one driving or when I was up before everybody else and usually for a little bit when I was going to sleep it just it just also it was uh easy reading material so it didn't take too long to get through them so but tomorrow after I get back home I will start the vlog for next week and that will be mainly talking about all the books I read on vacation that I haven't already discussed. So that's probably going to be a long video also. So anyway, that's it for this week. I will talk to you tomorrow.